All right. Um, today we're talking about something that is mathematical that you use in everyday life. Okay. We're going to talk a little bit about something called scale. We're going to talk about what that means in just a minute. First, I have a video I want you to see. So we turn off the lights real quick. And it's like a minute, minute and a half long. And you may have seen this movie. How many people have seen that movie before? Have you seen Zoolander before? Okay, so, why is that important? How does that relate to scale? How does that relate to scale, Timon? Because it was not the scale model of the actual thing. Or, yeah, it wasn't the actual size of what he was talking about. Right, so that was the joke, you know, what is this, Center for Ants, that he's going to put ants in this little, you know, scale model? It was a scale model, it wasn't the actual size that he was planning on building, but Zoolander's not, the, the whole joke throughout the movie is he's not really super intelligent, maybe, so he kind of didn't understand what it was, so that was the joke. Alright, so, question for you. How many people know what that is? Alexander, what is it? A Say. blueprint. A blueprint. Who uses blueprints? Price. Engineers. Engineers. Who else might use them? Contractors. Contractors. Who else might use them? Architects. Architects. Any other ideas? Those are all pretty pretty good. It's builder. Builder. An actual builder. Mathematicians. Mathematicians might use them. Realtors. Realtors. Good. So. It basically is what? What is a blueprint? And it, and they usually are printed on blue paper. That's why they're actually called a blueprint. Sydney? Like a layout of a structure. Yes, a layout of a structure. Which view is it usually? From above. Yes, so the bird's eye view, right? And of course, if you're going to draw a scale, uh, draw a blueprint of a building, you're not going to be able to draw the wall on the piece of paper 40 feet long. Right? You're not going to roll out 40 feet of paper, right? Does that make sense? So they use something called scale. So let's talk a little bit about what scale means. I'm going to turn this off so I can use the board here. Okay. My lovely background on my computer. That should turn it off, hopefully. Yes. Okay. Let me get the lights. Okay, so what's a scale? <laughs> what's a scale? An object to measure things or like a way to measure things. Okay, a way to measure things. So this would be like a balance scale. What else is a scale? It's like a, like a proportion and like a blueprint, like how it says like 40 feet that have like 4 inches. Right, so you might see a scale like this. Four inches equals 20 feet, something like that. Okay, what else? Um, like that tool on the board is also like a scale, and you have to have it so that it's even amounts. So you can have like, like page that you're going to want exactly the exact layout, but in a small <coughs> <coughs> exactly. So, in some scales, it's not necessarily that the weights on either side are the same. Sometimes there's something called a counterbalance, where you can put less weight on one side, but that indicates the weight of something on the other side that is proportional. They're not all necessarily exactly balanced. There's another example of the scale up there, but what were we going to say? Yeah, who's a musician in here? Who plays an instrument or sings? Okay, good. Fair amount of you. Good. So, and, and 
please understand, I have no idea how anywhere close <laughs> to that is correct. I, musically, I have no idea. But a scale goes, <laughs> and again, I know that was off, and yes, I just sang and got recorded on it. But um, that's okay. That would be the last time we'll probably make it on YouTube next week. Um, but a music scale, what's unique about a music scale that has to do with proportion? One of you musicians, help me out. Timon, help me out. Well, um, depending on how, depending on what note you put there, it's gonna, like, okay, it's gonna, okay. So, when you do that, when you mostly musician, it's like you're making different vibrations. And so, like, you can measure, like, how fast or slow you know, and what's the relationship then between a couple of notes then? What's the, what's the relationship between the vibration of the instrument, for example, say a string on a guitar, on this note and this note? What's the relationship? Is there one? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. No? It's a rough question? That's okay. So, um, this is called a scale because what's the difference in vibration between all of these, assuming I'd actually drawn a scale that was musically correct. Like, um, one color, but it's like Good. So one whole note is the space between, so the difference between an A and a G, for example, might be the same distance between a G and a C. And again, no idea if that's correct. But it's not. So give me the give me the spacing then. So, so it would be like A to G or like G to B. Okay, thank you. A to G and then G to B. Okay, so uh, thank you because, uh, like I said, I wasn't 100% sure on that one. But, so on a music scale, on a music scale, the proportion of the distance between those two notes is equal. Okay, so that term scale has a similar meaning in multiple different ways. It can mean measuring, it can mean musical scale, it could mean on a blueprint or a drawing, okay? Okay, so, what's a scale model? What's a scale model? Price. It's like, if you, like, if you don't want to make the whole thing as big as it's going to be, you have to make a smaller version so people can at least see what you're going to do. Correct. So, they use, a, they use a model, just like in the video, they use the scale model, right, that was representative of what it would look like in real life. And what did they use? Does anybody know what the term is for what they used with scale, with the scale model? Anybody know what that term is for the difference between what it is in real life and what it was in the model? True. True. Do you know what that what that is called? The different the the uh, um, the relationship between the real world measurement and the model measurement. Do I know what that's called? How many of you have ever heard this phrase? A scale factor. Have you heard of that before? Anybody? Yes. Yes. One person. Good. One head nod. Okay, um, anybody put together a model before? Like, with glue and all of that? Yeah? Okay. How did you know what pieces went in which locations? How did you know that? How did you know that? There's directions. Good. So, what if you misread the directions? How would you know a piece didn't fit? didn't go in that spot. Say you messed up and you started to put it one place and said, oh, that's wrong. Yeah, you have to figure out where it fits, right? So scale factor helps us figure out where things fit. Okay? Does that make sense to everybody? So scale factor, if you're looking for a definition, let's talk about our definition. It's the ratio of units the ratio of units between the actual size and the model or drawing size, that is called the scale factor. Okay? Did everybody make, that make sense to everybody? Okay. Take out your iPad. Turn to page 284. 
in your book. Yes. As you're doing that, scale is used in several different ways besides the ones we've already talked about. Um, how many of you have ever used the map application on either your phone or your iPad? Me too, all the time, right? So what's happening when you pinch out and pinch in? What happens? When you go like... When you pinch out? out? Yeah, um, it gets bigger. It gets and bigger, or it zooms in, right? So you can zoom in all the way down to like your street, right? Okay, what else happens, or what were you going to say? Initially the scale, like, um, when you, it gets larger or smaller compared to if you're like going out or in, if you're zooming, the, the scale will get larger. Where is the scale, um, usually, when you see that map? On the phone or on the Mac? Well, either one. Either one. It's usually right, it's usually right there, right? Right. Um, um, and, corners. yeah, in one of the four corners. And as you zoom in, as you, as you, as you pinch out, I don't know if that's really what it's called. Anybody said that right? Okay. <laughs> so zoom in. So as you, as you zoom in, the scale changes. As you zoom out, the scale changes. Because the size of your screen doesn't change, right? Right. Your iPad doesn't magically turn into a two foot by four foot screen when you're looking at it, right? So it actually changes the scale as you do that. Okay, everybody got the book open? Okay, so we got a couple of examples of that, uh, of scale drawing. So example one, there's a map scale. Somebody tell me in example one down there, in that map of Maryland, been to Hagerstown, lovely town, in case anybody's planning on vacation there. <coughs> what is the scale in that image? That's down there. What is the scale? What's the scale? One centimeter equals 24 miles. Okay, one centimeter equals 24 miles. Okay? Imagine this was on your phone or your iPad. So when you zoomed in, one centimeter might become 12 miles. It might become one mile, depending on how far you zoom in, right? So your scale will be ever changing, right? Okay, so um, if you flip over, uh, look over, excuse me, on page 285, you may have to flip on yours. Okay. So, example two it says a graphic artist is creating an advertisement for a new cell phone. If she uses a scale of five inches equals one inch, what is the length of the cell phone in the advertisement? Well, let's ignore the question for just a second. Why would a graphic artist need to use scale? Why would a graphic artist need to use scale? Why? If like they're putting it on a poster and the poster like paper is too small, then they have to make it smaller. Yes, but it still needs to be what? True. It's true to size. True to size. It still needs to be proportional. Your phone can't all of a sudden be, you know, it can't start out looking like this in the advertisement, right? And then all of a sudden, it looks like this. You see how these two aren't proportional? Does that kind of make sense? So if you change the dimensions, and, you, and this won't fit on the poster size with all of the words and the company you can buy it from and how much the plan costs and all those wonderful things that you can do with this, if that doesn't fit on the poster, you may need to draw this a graphic artist made to draw it smaller, but it can't change what it looks like. It can't go to looking like this, because then it's not a true representation, right? Okay, so. Shut my book. Okay, good. So that's what a, a, how a graphic artist might use it. Is everybody good with what scale looks like now? Everybody understand? Okay, all right. So, and then down at the bottom there, it has the definition on page 285 of what scale factor is. A scale written as a ratio without units in simplest form. Okay? It is a ratio of the units, but it's written in simplest form. Okay? All right. So, we're going to go over, turn the page again to page 286. It says, 
Finest game.